All right. Welcome, everybody, to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further faster. I'm your host, Gerald Osher, and every week we are talking to experts in the industry about all sorts of different things. And today is no exception. I'm super excited to bring in Tom Marslin, the VetSec chairman and also uh, leading the efforts around the VetSecCon, which is a security conference that we're going to totally uh, explore, talk about, explain why you'd be interested and get all into it. It's only 13 days, seven hours, 24 minutes and 30 seconds until that conference drops. So you're going to want to get all the information here. I do want to say thank you if you're here live watching with us. I genuinely appreciate it. Um, drop questions in the comments with a Q and uh, we'll answer them or Tom will answer them, whatever. If you're watching on replay, thank you very much. You're going to enjoy the stream. Check out some of the other content on the channel. And maybe, here's a little spoiler, you might be listening to this on the podcast. There is a renegade version of the Simply Cyber podcast that's out there. I've been teeing it up. 17 people have found it. I haven't promoted it a single second. So if you're listening on the podcast, mad props to you for being an early adopter. So let us get right into bringing Tom in stream because I want to get all up in um, vet sex business here. So let's bring in Tom really quick. Let's go with this layout right here. Tom, thank you for being with us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Gerald. Absolutely. Ah. So Tom, at, all right. So before we like dive into VetSecCon and really explore, um, you know, who is the conference for in, you know, surprise, it might, it might surprise you that it's, it's for a much larger audience than you may have initially assumed. Tom, how can you tell a little bit about yourself and how you play a role in the cybersecurity industry? Absolutely. Um, I'm 20 years active duty Navy, still in. I'm planning my own transition from the service myself here in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I got involved with VetSec about two years ago now um, and really just was looking for resources to plan my own transition out of the military. Uh, board elections came up about six months after I had been there and I volunteered to help and, and I've been doing it ever since. I'm really passionate about education and the cybersecurity industry itself, just trying to learn as much as I can as well and pass on those resources. And VetSec has been a great way that I've learned from so many people ahead of me in the industry and just trying to help where I can. Oh, that's fantastic. So so let's get right into what VetSec Con really is. So VetSec Con, I'm, I'm going to pull it up um, after I talk to you about this really quick so people can see it. But VetSec Con is essentially a security conference and it's open for anyone. That, that's my understanding. Can you kind of give us a high level overview of what VetSecCon is? Who is it designed for? And what can people expect to get out of it? Absolutely. So VetSecCon is VetSec, our nonprofit's annual uh, fundraising event. It's the way that we get the word out about VetSec. But the conference itself is geared for everyone. While the nonprofit serves the military, um, and the military community, both in the United States and abroad, the conference is there to support all cybersecurity industry professionals. We have three tracks. One of them you'll see very geared towards the military. It's called the transition track. And there's talks in there on, you know, interview advice, how to make a killer resume, what the transition path coming out of the military looks like. But then there's two others that'll really fit for anybody. The InfoSec skills track um, really has talks about red teaming, blue teaming, forensics, all sorts of stuff there. And then the final one is called the humanity track. And again, starting on day two for that one, we have partners that have worked with VetSec to provide resources um, to our members that are going to come on and talk about how they're lowering the bar for education in cybersecurity and what they're doing to help with the military and unemployment and, and people getting into the industry. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I love, I love the three tracks, um, you know, right there, the humanity, the info skills and the transition. Now, if, if I'm somebody, uh, Tom, who is, uh, you know, a military service member, maybe I'm, you know, going to be transitioning and I'm going to attend just the transition talks. Now, is it, is it geared for transitioning into cybersecurity or is it more, is it more, you know, I guess, uh, universal of just transitioning out of the military? Universal, I'd say. There are definitely talks that are from people in the industry in cybersecurity now that'll talk about their path and how they got into the industry. But we also have talks on just general HR, people that are that are out in the civilian world and what they're looking for for military members. 
We also have talks about, you know, people navigating the Veterans Administration and their benefits. So it, it fits anybody, whether they're going into cyber or not. Okay. So it, it, will any of the talks be recorded and available for replay? Because I know personally, if I was going to be transitioning, that would be very important to me. But there's so much other great content at the conference that it might be hard to choose where to, you know, where to spend your time. Yeah, absolutely. Every talk will be recorded and, and saved on our YouTube channel afterwards. Oh, that's fantastic. So I'll, I'll drop a, a link or, or, you know, what, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Is it VetSec on, on YouTube? Yeah, they can find VetSec on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Uh, base. Thank you. Uh, base is our mod today. I appreciate that. Uh, base, if you could drop a link to that VetSec YouTube and chat uh, so everybody can subscribe to it and be made aware so they can get the, the content after the conference. Now, um, continuing to drill into the conference a little bit, uh, Tom, and get these yeah. details, um, you know, I see a capture the flag, right? Which is an awesome activity. If you're not familiar with capture the flag, it's an awesome event uh, where you can apply practical skills uh, and, you know, demonstrate, um, you know, capability in a controlled environment. So can you, can you give us a little bit of detail on this capture the flag event? Absolutely. So our capture the flag is a new thing for us this year. Last year, we were kind of bare bones. We had the three tracks and we ran it through Zoom. This year, we're running the conference through the platform Hopin. But our Capture the Flag was donated to us by our partner, Immersive Labs. They run a, a wide range of uh, lab environments for people getting into the into the industry. And this one is, is no exception. People will log in starting at the kickoff. It'll run for the whole conference. Um, a wider range of labs that they compete through and the top score is going to get a one year premium subscription to their platform. Oh, that's fan. That is fantastic. I love, I love when the uh, capture the flag events um, have like cool prizes. Uh, and, and just, if you're new to capture the flag, in addition to it being a really uh, a practical skills based uh, contest, um, I have competed in, you know, probably five or six uh, CTFs in my you know, history or whatever you want to call it. And I always have found them to be very collaborative, very social. Uh, even though you're like, you know, sitting at your house, it's a virtual conference, right? You're sitting at your house alone doing a CTF. Usually there's some type of discord going on. There's a lot of uh, communication, people helping each other, not giving the answer away, but maybe giving a, a hint or uh, maybe you should look at it, it like, you're looking at the app, Jerry, maybe you should look at the operating system, right? So kind of given that gentle nudge. And uh, I, I've met a lot of people through CTF. So um, don't sleep on the CTF. Although um, you might you might find yourself uh, running out of time between going to the talks all day. And then typically, you like do the CTFs and you could do the CTFs during the day, but typically you do the talks and the CTFs at night. And uh, you basically go you go for broke on uh, burning yourself out over the weekend, but it's worth it. You feel good about it at the end. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good way to just get more get more info out about the conference and let people have some fun while they're attending. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love CTS. So uh, continuing to dig in, uh, you know, kind of pick apart your your uh, itinerary for the event. Again, this is October twenty eighth. This is VetSec Con. Uh, a completely we we should have covered this on the on the get go, Tom. How much does it cost to go to VetSec Con? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so it's absolutely free. So if you're looking for, you know, an opportunity to network, an opportunity to get educated, an opportunity to hear some great speakers talk about various uh, aspects of cybersecurity, you know, the, the only thing stopping you is is you making the commitment and and taking the time and, and making it a priority. Frankly, right? If you if you if you if it's not a priority, then it's not a priority. But be, you got to be honest with yourself about about it. So I love that it's free. I appreciate that it's free. So, so digging in, in addition to the talks, I see a couple workshops. So uh, can you kind of explain to us what a, what, the, what, the, what a workshop is, at least in this capacity, and what users or uh, guests could experience or expect from these workshops? Yeah, absolutely. The first two you see there, uh, those are going to be inside the Hopin platform. The first one's by Joe Helly, a.k.a. the mayor. Um, he's donated 25 of his vouchers to his Movement Pivoting and Persistence course to VETSEC members, so that'll be open to our membership only. But a workshop in this sense is is longer than a normal a normal talk, more interactive. The the users will have the ability to share their screen with him and he's going to be teaching them his course essentially over that two to three hour period. Uh, the second one, Jax, is going to be talking about uh, OSINT 
and kind of protecting yourself before you go on a date, but, but really explaining OSINT and what it is. And same thing, a longer talk, more interactive between the audience and the speaker. And then the final one, this is more geared towards, you know, the evening time or late afternoon Pacific time. But John Stoner and Leslie Carhart from Dragos are going to be really interactive workshop where they'll help re review your resume for you, provide feedback, and using a lot of the tips that inside VetSec, we provide to our own members to help them get careers in cyber. Oh, that's awesome. That's a, that, those are uh, the, like, not only is that an amazing uh, collection of workshops, but I regularly have people uh, reach out to me, ask about resume reviews or, you know, getting best practices and tips. So to have, um, you know, really the caliber of those two doing resume reviews and giving tips is fantastic. And I can tell you for a fact, they hire people. Uh, I'm not saying that you're going to get a job from them. What I'm saying is they have experience seeing lots of resumes, so they know what's going on. I also want to uh, point out just so people can really appreciate, and we got some questions coming in, Tom. So I'm going to sp uh, splice those into the talk. So uh, sure. for the fo for folks in chat, I see you. We're going to get to you in just one second here. I want to point out that when we say, or when when Tom says that this this course right here at 8 a.m. is Joe Hell's course, like this is literally what we're talking about, people. This is the PCM Academy. Where is it? Where is it? Right here. Movement, pivoting, and persistence. This is a high quality lesson, right? And normally when you would take this, it would be a recorded version of Joe. Literally what you're getting is Joe, the author of this course, teaching you personally. This is an incredible, and it's free. This is incredible. Now it is for VetSec members only. So I guess I should qualify that now that I'm seeing that there. So you do have to be a member of VetSec. Is that accurate, Tom? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we so, still have about 15 openings left for anybody in VetSec that wants to sign up for it. Okay, yeah. So if you're a, uh, a an active or former service member uh, of the United States or of any country that is friendly with the United States, I guess there might be 14 of them, uh, you would qualify as a VetSec member or you could get the membership and you could do this. So I, I strongly encourage, I mean, learning from the person who developed the curriculum is awesome. Uh, and then obviously I know Jax quite personally. She's very good at threat intelligence, open source intelligence, um, the gambit. She, she's she's wonderful, very smart woman. Also co-author of Cybersecurity Master Plan, if you may have picked that up uh, out there in chat. So let's um, let's go to chat really quick, Tom, before I keep uh, picking apart the conference agenda. Um, I saw a really great question in here. Where is it? Michael Dunn wants to know if you need volunteers. He's got references. Um, he would love to help, uh, you know, contribute on on the conference. So, are you are you in need of any assistance still? I know it's just two weeks away. Um, not right now, but we have plenty of projects in VetSec that we're always looking for help for. Um, if Michael wants to reach out to me on LinkedIn or or anywhere else, if he's a member of VetSec, then please reach out and we'll find a place that we can use some help for sure. Awesome. Yeah, and you know, since Michael volunteered, I'll give him a shout out here. Third place at Red Siege CTF at Wild West Hack and Fast. Nice job, Michael. So nice. Uh, no, yeah, definitely bringing the heat there. Uh, David wants to know if there's a Discord for VetCon, for, for the actual conference, the VetSecCon, or is it, what, what, how do people kind of uh, communicate? Uh, the main communication is going to be through the platform itself. We are going to have a Discord open for the resumes and refreshments and, and some of those workshops where they're going to be more interactive, but any member can chat with anybody else through the platform itself. Okay. Now, when you say the Discord open for resume and, and networking and stuff, is that the VetSec Discord server? Um, it will, we're, we're standing up a Discord just for the conference. Oh, okay. Um, cool. All right. We, we run our VetSec, uh, the, the main community of VetSec through Slack itself. Okay. Okay. So there will be a Discord server for VetSecCon, but not yet. There isn't one yet. Correct. Okay. How would someone find out about like you know it's like let's say you stand it up tomorrow like where will you be communicating or socializing out that it's up and available and people can join both on the conference website and then when you go to register that'll direct you over to hop in and it'll be right there as well oh cool all right plenty of uh, opportunity to find out where it is also i want to just uh drop that we will be doing a raffle today for a try hack me voucher i believe it's for one month full platform access um compliments of cyber supply drop and josh mason so thank you josh um let's see does vetsec have a mentor program for vets that were not in the it cyber field 
Tom. So the the great the the kind of the, the most important thing about VetSec as a whole is it's a very community based approach. You know, we're an all volunteer board of five people that all have day jobs. I'm the only one that's actively not in the industry yet. Um, the other four board members are, but we don't have a formal mentor program. We have members giving back to to people that are coming in behind them. So there's a lot of people that come to us and say, I want to work in cyber when I get out, but they ha don't have that experience yet. And between our resume channel, our interview channel, and then the technical skills, the job listings and discussions, everyone helps everyone else out in VetSec. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Especially the, the job postings, uh, you know, that, that always uh, feels good because, you know, like Googling for jobs just feels like a fruitless uh, activity kind of yelling into the wind. So let's, let's dig in a little bit more onto the actual uh, conference again. I, 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 I love kind of digging in for me personally, uh, for those of you who have been followers of the show for a while, you kind of know how, uh, neurotic I am when it comes to like planning and organizing and structure. And one of my favorite activities is going through the conference guide and like laying out like what my plan of attack will be for the day. Um, so, you know, I, I'm really enjoy going through this. So I'm just looking here again on the right. This is, uh, the transition one. Now this is interesting. So John Helmus, who is a uh, red team pen tester, also, also co-author of cybersecurity career master plan and friend of mine, uh, is doing, um, a transition talk here. No surprise that there's a Wu Tang reference uh, <laughs> here. That's classic, John. Um, but it looks like you know. I know you said it was more transition and generic, but Tom, I'm seeing like a lot of uh, like social engineering your next job. So there is some some overlap or interplay between cybersecurity skills and transitioning out of the military, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Depending on kind of which talk you're going for, you know, Bill's talk that you're seeing there from the employer side of the desk would be more mm -hmm. generic in, into getting into any job on the other side. Um, Anthony's talk on knowing is half the battle. That's going to talk more about the DOD skill bridge program and things that you should be looking at as you're nearing the end of your military service. Mm -hmm. So again, applicable to anything. Uh, John's definitely will lean cyber for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Okay, so just continuing to look here, this is on the InfoSec side, uh, I believe, right? So, oh, the humanity side, okay. Humanity side, we got um, cybersecurity boot camps. Uh, so I don't know if this is a vendor-sponsored talk right here. Um, Evolve Security has worked with us previously. They actually were working with John a little bit before. Um, they're going to be talking about their OSCP boot camp specifically. Okay. Um, I'm a little wary myself of boot camps in general, uh, but Evolve is is actually running one that that's pretty decent and does provide certification at the end. So uh, they're um, going to talk a little bit there. That's fantastic. And until PNPT takes over the industry, OSCP is kind of a golden ticket uh, if you want to be a professional um, uh, pen tester, ethical hacker. Yep. So I see also Josh Mason here about lowering the bar for cyber education. I, I do appreciate Josh, uh, again, uh, donating on behalf of Cyber Supply. I dropped the raffle prize today. But, um, you know, I, I, I like I like uh, where this talk is heading. I'm sure it has to do with the various opportunities that are, I guess, you might say non-traditional, right? Not a four-year college degree, but other ways to get practical skills that are good in the market. Um, Stefan Semmelroth, again, how to how to crush it as a CISO? Um, you know, we'll see we'll see how that goes. This talk could be interesting even if you're early into the industry, um, because if you're understanding kind of like what the overall structure is and what the macro level um, uh, thoughts and, and and guides would be for a CISO, then you can better understand how you as a GRC analyst or SOC analyst one can fit into that bigger picture, right? Like if you're just a cog, you don't really understand how the machine works, but if you understand how the machine works, you understand how you fit into it much better. So very, very cool. Um, yeah. So it's multiple days. Um, any particular talk, Tom, that you're looking forward to? Oh man, there's so many. Um, Peter Klein, actually that you have right there, the opportunity of the unexpected. Um, mm -hmm. He's a fellow veteran transition out and, started his own nonprofit called uh, Boots to Books. I'm really looking forward to that. And then anytime I get a chance to listen to Joe speak, uh, I'm, I'm always super excited. Uh, I've already done, uh, purchased and went through most of his movement pivoting and persistence course, and it's great material. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and this this talk right here, 
definitely interesting because like, you know, a CVE basically is like a public published identifiable vulnerability that is like recorded and the, the vendor has to report it. And it's like, it's like a really cool badge of honor. I will tell you, like, I don't have any CVEs, uh, but if I did, it would definitely be on my resume. And if I saw one on someone's resume, it would definitely be an incredible talking point. So uh, typically reserved for security researchers and pen testers only. But if that's the, the way you're leaning, uh, there is a huge opportunity for you to take advantage of learning how to find CVEs. And then I, I would imagine that Joe is going to go through how we uh, responsibly disclose that to the vendor, how we got the CVE numbering and all that stuff. So um, yep. very cool. So Tom, uh, James asks, when registering for the conference, in addition to uh, going through the site, do they need to register through the platform? Um, so before we stood up the Hopin platform, we were taking registrations directly into the VetSecCon site. All of those have been ported over to Hopin. Um, so now if you click register on the VetSecCon site, it takes you right over to Hopin. Okay. So I guess the short answer is no. It's, it's one-stop registration. Okay, perfect. Is... Um... Is VetSec membership open to vets only? Uh, active, uh, active duty, military, reservists, guard members, and veterans of the U.S. and the 14 eyes countries, yes. All right. So hopefully, uh, Kemi, uh, that, that clears that up. Like a huge, like, so, you know, in, I guess, let me ask you this, because this, you know, I was not a service member, but I came up in a Marine Corps family, which is very clearly an armed service. But then you get things like, Coast Guard, right? Which I like, they get a hard time, but that's still an armed service. Like, are there any other like fringe services that would qualify as veteran status or vet sec status that people may be un unaware of? Um, so, you know, National Guard would qualify for us. Uh, the Coast Guard also definitely qualifies for us. We haven't had applicants for many of the other uniformed services like Health and Human Services or NOAA. That would have to be a, a look at our bylaws to see. Um, kind of the biggest question we always get is why not military spouses or military children? And really that's just because of the community nature that we provide. You know, I have a private mental health chat that we provide mental health support to veterans as well. So just some of that discussion is best kept to the community we have. Okay. Yeah. And that sounds uh, fair. And I could understand the confusion because uh, spouses and uh, children typically get a lot of, uh, benefits, right? That the, the veteran him, him or herself would actually be uh, uh, available to? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'm just looking back through chat here. All right. So everything, everything's looking good. Yeah. No problem, Kemi. You got it. So, so Tom, okay. So with VetSecCon, it's kind of a one-time event. It's, it's virtual. Um, have you guys been like, is this, I guess, is this part of a bigger, um, program or operation or mission that uh, VetSec is kind of executing on. Absolutely. So this is just kind of our public way of getting out to the community and introducing ourselves and providing some resources back. Um, VetSec as a whole is, is much bigger. Um, you know, we have a community right now of, uh, as of right this moment, 3,234 members, again, all military or previous military. And really our mission is to create a world where no veteran pursuing a career in cybersecurity goes unemployed. Um, we provide that mainly through our community. Um, you know, numerous people in the industry that are taking their time and giving back um, in the form of resume reviews, mock interviews, general mentorship, technical advice, you name it. Um, and then the, the way that we on the board specifically try and foster that is through partnerships with other organizations um, to provide discounted resources or free resources to members so that they can gain the skills necessary to get into the industry. So, you know, I, I know you had said that spouses and children are not, um, a, you know, I guess cleared or whatever, however you want to put it. And, and for, ve for very good reasons, I, I understand your reasons. Does, does VETSEC collaborate or partner or have a sister organization or like, do you guys have like an official partnership with anyone that kind of extends the reach of the work you're doing or complements the work you're doing? Um, there are other organizations that fit the bill for providing those resources. None that we have an official partnership with, and we haven't spun off an organization of our own. 
but there are other organizations um, hiring our heroes. Um, I think with you, with me is providing that access as well. Operation code. So there are other organizations that do provide that support. Okay. So if, if people are veterans or, or know a veteran or in active duty, right? So you could be active duty today and, and still, right? You don't have to be a vet to be in vet sec, right? Like Correct. You, Absolutely. I am active duty. Yeah. Anybody yeah. current or former military. Yeah. So if they are meet that qualification and they wanted to, I guess, check out or become part of that community, um, what, what would not... Can you answer what would be the process for them to get involved? And then also, can you elaborate on what, um, I guess, what their expectations could be or, you know, like what, what the experience would be like? Yeah, absolutely. So to get involved with our organization, uh, veteranssec.com is our website. And they can go there, click on the Slack link and, and apply. Um, within three to five business days, normally one of our moderators will We'll do a little bit of OSINT, make sure they're in the military or, or were, and give them an invite to our channel. Um, once they join the Slack channel, really it's kind of up to them to explore their interests. We have channels, again, around the social, the technical, the transition, the military benefits, and a lot of pinned posts and guides on where they can obtain resources. And like I said, you know, 99% of our offering really is that community that we provide for people to kind of bridge that gap of, you know, when they're on active duty, the community they have and the, the workplace environment they have, and then the transition out into cyber and the community that they're going to have in their civilian workplace. So, um, you know, members can reach back and ask for resources from us. Um, we have a ton of pinned posts that'll explain what we provide, and they're provided with a new member guide when they join that talks about some of our continuing partnerships like Immersive Labs, uh, you know, they have their lab environment open to all of our members free of charge. Uh, CompTIA and Fortinet were both partners with for discounted vouchers and stuff like that. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so I, I, I was looking back over here at the, uh, at the agenda really quick, and I saw, interestingly, at the end of the event, you have your update and closing of the uh, VETSEC. But then you have this blue team live fire exercise. Can you can you explain? Because like the red team has the CTF, right? And that's a really well established thing. This blue team one, uh, it's intriguing. What what's going on with that? Yeah. So again, um, that's I, I actually should update the site. So that is a workshop environment. Um, that is another two hour, two and a half hour exercise run by Michael Smith. The reason it's on after the closing is that's when he's available to do it for us, but. Um, he's going to be taking 10 VETSEC members through Cloud Range's platform and giving them some blue team training. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so if you're aspiring SOC analyst or you want to uh, beef up your resume a little bit and, you know, you know, say you train with Michael, say you, you know, like, I don't know what tool set he'll be using, but you can definitely uh, take advantage of that. I had, I had seen one of the comments in chat talking about how do you get experience without experience, right? And that's, that's always that catch 22, right? Your first job is always kind of the tough one. Uh, if I can find that, uh, I will. Yeah. So Hector's asking, like, is there any course for it? But I, you know, this is such a common question in the community that I do want to take a minute and address it, <clears throat> especially since we're talking about VetSecCon right now. So Hector, um, it, it is hard to get a job without experience uh, and it's hard to get experience without a job. But what I want to tell you is you can, if it's easier to get the job through networking, right? I, I know this is going to sound uh, like it doesn't make any sense, but trust me, like if you, if you are meeting people, you're networking, right? Like, you know, I don't know if you're a former vet or not, but you join VetSec um, uh, Discord and you go to VetSecCon, you do the resume review, you're talking to people, you're getting to know. It's not, it's not instantaneous that you get a job, right? So you can't move forward as if you're getting a job because of this. What you're doing is becoming a member of a community and you're, you're contributing to the community, you're taking from the community, you're part of the community. And then people know about jobs, right? And I would say, I don't know what your experience is, Tom. I know you've been in the military for a while, so it's a little different, but like I'd say 50% of jobs are never really published. And if they are, they like of that 50%, they're already like spoken for, right? They're publishing them because HR says they have to, but like it's already been identified who is going to get hired. 
Um, and it's usually because of networking and it's not a friend's thing. It's not like Tom's my buddy. He came on Simply Cyber, so I'm going to hire him. It's more like I have a job for a SOC analyst. Tom has been training to become a SOC analyst for a year. I know Tom. Tom's reliable. I'll ask Tom if he wants the job. Tom wants the job done, right? I don't have to, I don't have to screen 50 applicants. I don't have to, like I've, I've found a, a talent and a qualified candidate already. And that's because I know Tom because of networking, right? So um, I just want to drop that there. VetSecCon is a perfect opportunity to engage and network with people. Doing the CTF is an excellent way to network with people. That, that blue team live fire exercise is a great way to network with people. So don't sleep on networking. It's, it's arguably the most important thing that you could do to, to, to break into cybersecurity, hands down. Do you want to comment on, on that, Tom? Since you're kind of in that, you're actually experiencing this firsthand versus, you know, me, you know, sitting up on the hill, looking down, talking like I know something. No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, that, that question is so common right now, but, but networking is key. You know, I had, I think a lot of veterans that are joining VetSec don't realize that they do have experience um, that they can apply towards the roles that they're looking for. They just maybe don't realize how to word it. And so that's where the resume advice and the mock interviews are going to help with that. Um, but networking is key. You know, I have a member who reached out to me this past week and came to me directly and said, I'm thinking about reenlisting in the service. I really don't want to. I, I would like to stay where I'm at. You know, she lives in Washington State. She says, hey, I don't want to have to move. I'd like to separate and get into cybersecurity. But I'm just not getting any hits on any jobs I'm applying for. I've I've tailored my resume. I, I just don't have experience. Everyone that reaches back to me says that I just don't have what they're looking for. And through networking, now she is interviewing at three other companies and hopefully is going to find what she's looking for. Uh, but again, that's, that's just through networking and us reaching out with our networks to try and help out. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, you know, you want someone to have... Um not feel like they're forced into like a situation or a career path or, or, you know, like a big life decision that isn't really aligned to what they want. Uh, so that's great that you guys are able to do that. And, and thank you for the uh, case study on networking. Right. Um, I also want to highlight shameless plug. I was going to do this at the end of the stream, but just to call out on Monday next week. So Monday, the 18th, I will be doing this like nationwide talk uh, in collaboration with the national Institute of standards and technology, NIST, uh, nice for cybersecurity awareness uh, month. Uh, it's the cybersecurity career week of cybersecurity awareness month. So I'm doing this talk um, and I'm super pumped. I'll be wearing like, you know, like my, my official presentation outfit. Uh, you know, I don't know if you have one of those Tom, but I have like one outfit that I wear for like my big talks or whatever. So uh, it'll, it'll officially be there. So, you know, if you're interested, Hector, uh, maybe check out that talk as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm glad that NIST asked me back. Um, uh, after last year. I mean, not that last year was a train wreck, like last year was good too, but it's just nice to be, you know, asked back. So, um, so, all right, Tom, let me, let me see here. Um, what do you recommend for someone who's changing careers? What's the biggest issue with boot camps credibility? Okay. So yeah, Tom, perfect question. What do you, what do you recommend for someone changing careers? Like, you know, going from the military into, uh, corporate or, and, and you mentioned your concern about boot camps. So, like, uh, let's uh, let you you answer this while I get the giveaway ready. OK, we'll do the giveaway in a minute. Sounds great. Um, for someone who's changing careers, I really recommend networking and mentorship first and foremost. Um, I recommend seeing what experience you have that ties to the industry you're looking to get into and finding people in the jobs that you're looking for and reaching out to them and asking to to get some mentorship and get some networking. Um, I think that part of this question is so much more important than my own personal issues with boot camps. Mm -hmm. um, but but that's that's really it. Um, if you're a veteran or serving in the military, then I recommend joining organizations. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be VetSec. There are plenty of organizations that have noble missions of helping people find careers. Uh, we focus specifically on cyber, but there's there's organizations out there that want to hire veterans in in any field out there that you could get into. Um, I will say with, with boot camps, you know, we saw the, we saw the discussion over the last few years with for-profit colleges and everything that came around with the student loan industry. I will just encourage everyone to do their research and see what they're getting out of whatever they're going to spend a lot of their own money or, you know, their, their veterans benefits money to, to go after. Yeah. 
that really is the uh, the crux of the boot camp. Is there's so many and there's no there's no standard bearer on you know this one's good versus this one. There's no there's no I don't want to say audit, but um, anyone can open a boot camp. So we're running the raffle right now. It's hashtag VetSec. So if you just drop hashtag VetSec in chat, uh, you will be entered to win a month of VIP platinum all-star super super status on try hack me a full platform basically will give you access to that and we've only got 27 people on stream today so your chances are pretty good people if you enter uh enter today so uh let's uh let's see we've got a question here from david about what what would you suggest as a good resource for finding a career path in cybersecurity? so um to that, to that question, uh, Tom, are there any resources that you have found through the military or through VETSEC that has helped you uh, in, in really finding a career path in cybersecurity? Um, well, I'm still hunting my own path down. Um, like I said, I still have about two years left in the military. Um, and not just because I'm on your stream, but I will definitely plug your book because I grabbed it myself and had a read on it. And I think it's, I think it's excellent. It really breaks down the different domains and kind of explains, you know, I get a lot of people who say, I want to go into cybersecurity, but they don't know what they want to do in cyber. So I think that's a great resource. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I want to work in cybersecurity and then, okay, what do you want to do? Like wh what part of cybersecurity? And then you just get like the blank stare. Right. So you know, that's, that's how that works. Now, actually, uh, there's a question in chat that's really, really interesting from Michael Dunn, or he, I'm going to, I'm going to take over his question. Okay. So Michael says he would join the service to do cyber right now. Okay. But he couldn't get through boot camp. What, what if, if you're someone's young watching this stream and uh, they're thinking like, I, you know, I live in nowhere. I don't have any opportunities. Um, you know, I'm not going to go to college, but I want to work in cybersecurity. Is there a clear path that could allow someone to enter the armed services and get into uh, cybersecurity? Or is it, or is it like wanting to be a fighter pilot where like, there's just not so many jobs available? Um, I would say, look at the air force more than the other services. There are cybersecurity positions out there. The, the beginning path to getting into the service is the ASVAB test, which is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. So it's it's an aptitude test that qualifies you for different military jobs. Um, that's the first step. And then talking to a recruiter and, and seeing what jobs the person qualifies for. Um, you know, my cousin is is working directly in Air Force Cyber. Um, there are positions in, in the other branches that do it. It just kind of depends on how that test goes really for you. Yeah. Interesting. Is like out of complete nerdery, is that test like publicly available? Like, could I take that test just to see how I do on it? Um, I know there's practice tests, but I don't know how accurate they are. Okay. Well, could I go to a recruiter and take it or would that, would I be obligating myself to some type of uh, like art? Like I accidentally sign up for the armed services. Like that's how you guys find out. I like accidentally <laughs> join the Marines or something. Oh, no, no obligation. I took the first time I took the ASVAB, it was actually in high school that I took it. So. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Well, let's do the drawing, y'all. Uh, let's see. We've only got 12 people, so your chances are excellent. All right, let's do it. Final, final chances for people to drop in. Let's draw it. Ready? Hold on. I got my sound effects, guys. You know I like my sound effects, right? Here we go. Here we go. Why am I in there? I certainly don't want to win it. <laughs> All right, that Indian kid. All right, there it is. Nice job, that Indian kid. Uh, connect with me on um, either Discord or LinkedIn. Um, you know, get, get to me somehow. I'm very, very overt, so you should be able to find me, and I will get you your winning. So congratulations to that Indian kid. Um, that would have been embarrassing. We would have redrew if it landed on me. I think I, I entered by accident because I told people in chat what to type. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, so another question in the audience, um, a really good question too. Where is it? It had to do with, um, well, I don't see where it is. I'll find it. But basically the question is, can you get continuing education credits for attending the conference? Do you have any, any like evidence uh, to support that? 
Um, I think it's going to depend on the organization that you're using for your recertification. I know that you can use, you know, documentation of the conferences that you attend for some like SANS. Um, that being said, for the capture of the flag with Immersive Labs, if you participate in that, you can directly download a certificate of your hours that you spent in the CTF for use. So that's that's one way that you can uh, use CEs for the conference. Okay, awesome. Mitchell, uh you know, Mitchell drops in. He was in the military 28 years ago. He's been in law enforcement. He's got an MBA. Any place for the, for you in this field? I would like to change careers. So let, let me answer this and then I'll throw it to you, Tom, because I think there yeah. might be a ton of resources for Mitchell. Mitchell, I've worked with uh, some people uh, on, on Simply Cyber who worked in law enforcement. You are tailor-made for digital forensics and incident response. Like you, you have already trained the mindset of doing digital forensics. So I would encourage you to check it out. When you say, is there a place for you in this field? Like there is a place that is like got a beanbag chair and it's like overstuffed and it's, you know, perfectly uh, climate controlled for you to sit down and chill out and be in this field. Like it's, it's straight up digital forensics. Now you could explore other areas, but I'm telling you, that's the one that's got the comfiest chair for you to land in. Uh, Tom? Yeah, same thing. Uh you know, incident response, I think, uh, and digital forensics, definitely. If you have the mindset of how to do an investigation properly and control of evidence and the whole nine there, I think it's a perfect fit. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just say, Mitchell, check out, I have a video on my channel called like uh, law enforcement's next job or something like that. It's with a, I interview a guy named Eric Fenema, who's a retired police officer, who's now like the, the leader at uh, Kroll, now Dell, uh, which, which they're like a high end digital forensics company. Like when like a boat goes down and it's been underwater for like a year and they recover some piece of equipment, like his team's the one that pulls the data off of it. Uh, so you, you could get some value out of that. So, oh, also, uh, even though he's been 28 years, Tom, uh, Mitchell qualifies for VETSEC, right? He could join the Discord and start engaging with that network community. Absolutely. Yeah, so Mitchell, check out the uh, the Discord there. Um, is, is there a link or how, how do people who are veterans find out about VETSEC? Can they just go to the website? Yeah, veteransec.com. There's a link from the conference website back to there as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. So check that out, Mitchell. Hopefully that helps you out. All right, let's 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 keep looking here. Oh, thank you, Base. Base is dropping my uh, my book um, in, in chat here. Uh, question from Stefan, friend of the show. Nice to see you, Stefan. Uh, what are you most excited about at the conference? Honestly, for me, it's just the opportunity to meet so, so many awesome people. I think it's going to be great. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Michael lives in the middle of nowhere. So a virtual conference is quite fitting. Uh, I love, you know, people like, like older InfoSec, pe not older, but like people who have been in InfoSec for a while, you establish these relationships that you really only see the people at Vegas in the summer at Hacker Camp. And I, while I get that with COVID and all these virtual conferences, I have been loving the ability to go to multiple conferences, not be restrained by financial cost or obligation that I have. Like I've got to do something at home or watch my kids or something like that. And I can't be on the road for five days. I have loved it. So uh, kudos to you, Tom, and to the VetSecCon community for making it virtual and making it really accessible, not just free, but like um, wherever you are, you could be in, you know, whatever, D Dubai or Qatar, and you can be there. All right. Um, let's see. Jerry accidentally joined the military. Yeah, that would be, that would be something. My my wife would be like, oh, not so, do do <laughs> uh, so is your current MOS in the Navy tech IT related? Uh, mine is tech. It's not IT per se. I I have had the opportunity to pick up what you call collateral duties in the Navy, basically where you get to help somebody else do a job. Um, and that's how I've become interested in IT, but my current MOS is uh, Navy nuclear power. Nice. Where are some good places to volunteer at that you've come across? Oh man, there's a lot. Um, a couple that, that I help out with when I can, uh, Operation Safe Escape is one. Um, they That's another way that you can contribute in cyber. They do a lot on the OSINT side and, and provide some training there. Um, you know, and then most of my time is spent within VetSec itself, but there's, there's a ton out there. 
Yeah, there really is. I, I'd almost throw it back to you, Owen. It's like, what do you want to do? Like, where, like what's your end goal, right? So like you can volunteer a million different places, but, um, you know, uh, Trace Labs, uh, excellent organization to help find missing persons, but you do a ton of OSINT work and you get plugged into that community. Uh, you can volunteer like your local, um, like your local school district in, 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 you know, like the, every organization needs cybersecurity help, right? So you, if you can help them in some capacity, uh, they're more than willing to, uh, to take it. So uh, you can get plugged into those organizations. I bet you, if you went to any of these discords, like your discord or Black Hills discord, or some of the other big discords, they probably have a channel for volunteer opportunities, uh, I would imagine. So definitely check that out, Owen. I know you're involved in those uh, discords too. I see you always in there. I'm um, getting some nice words here about the book. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, let's see. I'm trying to, like, <laughs> my chat bot is going bananas here. Um, let's see. Do you need a number at subscription to participate in the CPS? Uh, David, I'm not sure what CPS is. Are you meaning CTF? Uh, I guess. And if, if you do, how do you... Yeah, I guess no subscription you... required for the capture of the flag. Okay, cool. Oh, <laughs> If I just looked at the next uh, the next comment, I would have seen. Oh, there. All right. So, yeah. So you could just show up in, in CTF. Uh, I also want to point out really quick about CTFs. I know the first place prize for the CTF is really great. Uh, but I want people to understand that sometimes at CTFs, especially bigger ones like uh, Red, Red Team Village at DEF CON, like if you place in the top 10, there are employers there waiting to talk to you about a job opportunity. It's not guaranteed that you're going to get a job. It's not guaranteed that it's going to be what you want or where you want or the price you want. But there are people waiting with job opportunities to see who wins. And it doesn't matter if you're a high school dropout or if you have a PhD, they don't care. What they want is someone who can do what you just did in that CTF. So CTFs are a great opportunity, not just for networking and camaraderie and a good time, but it can lead to uh, work as well. Let's see. We're going to be wrapping up here. We're at 51 minutes. So we're going to, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So David, same question. He's just re-asking again. Sorry. Um, let's see. All right. So yeah, so that the they're, they're trickling in here, the comments, but those are mostly the questions. So I guess, Tom, I'll throw it back on you, um, you know, kind of to, to start uh, bringing it home. What is it about VetSecCon and VetSec that you, that you really want to impart upon people who are in the audience or watching this on replay? Um, you know, I think that across the board, um, if you talk about our society in the country, I think a lot of people will not hesitate to thank people for their service. Um, and I, I want to be careful with how I say it because I'm still in, but a lot of people will thank people for their service, but it doesn't extend more than a parking spot at Lowe's or a 10% discount or something like that. And I think that recognizing the struggles that those people face when they get out of the military, especially when they don't have a lot of skills that, that directly translate and recognizing the role that we uh, in society have to help them find roles is, is crucial. You know, there's uh, about 18 million veterans in the country right now, and there's about 200,000 people separating from the military every year, which is a pretty large number when you think about it. So any organization that can do uh, what, VETSEC is doing or what others are doing, I think is a pretty noble pursuit. And I just encourage everyone to, you know, donate if you can, attend VETSEC Con and learn from the people that are speaking there and, you know, become educated on the industry and help where you can. Thank you very much, Tom. I, I was going to round it out, but we do have one last question from Joe and I, I want to make sure that everybody gets their question answered. So yeah. I'll, I'll defer to you because there's acronyms in here that I'm, I just don't understand. So I'll let you, uh, Navy guy, read that. Okay. Um, so Joe's coming from a, a position as a cryptologic technician in the military, which is uh, as close to the Navy as cyber gets, I think. Um, and contracting to, I don't know if he's saying Ships Force or San Francisco private cyber, um, but breaking into and shifting to GRC. Um, really that field, if you've served as an ISSO in the military, I think your skills line closely with, with GRC, um, information system security officer or information system security manager, but really learning the standards and how they differ from the DOD standards to 
you know, the NIST 800 and everything else in the, in the civilian sector, I think that's where you're going to make your money there. Great, great advice. Excellent. So let me just drop this one more time just to remind people. I know I did it in the middle of the of the talk, but I do want to just remind people really quick because it is the next upcoming live stream uh, this Monday. Uh, I will be giving a talk. It'll be this is a, a little bit of an unusual format. It will be a Monday, which is unusual. Also, the format will be only me speaking and I will do 30 minutes of what you absolutely need to know about landing your first cybersecurity job. Uh, and like, you know, like the, the best way to go about doing it. And then I will do a 60 minute Q and a rapid fire where I will attempt to answer as many questions as humanly possible. Um, it's expected to be well attended. So hopefully the questions are, uh, that I am answering. If it's not your question, it's a question that you also have. So please, please attend. Um, it will be, it will be an intense event, 90 minutes, uh, breakneck speed and uh, a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of value. So hopefully uh, you can attend that. All right, everybody, uh, chat, love having you today. It was a great time. Uh, Tom, thank you for coming and sharing, uh, really VetSecCon, telling us about what this wonderful conference is going to do for folks. The price point is quite, quite, uh, appetizing at free <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, just really the VetSec community in general and how people can take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. And thank you, Chat, for being here today. And uh, until next time, stay secure.